Hi, I'm Bruce with Trick Tools. Today we're going to take a look at the GRIT GI150 Centerless Grinding Machine by Fine Power Tools. Now you may have seen part one of this video, which is the unboxing and assembly of this machine. Now we're going to look at the fire up uh, adjustment and actual use of this machine. So let me give you a little bit of a walk around. Uh, the GRIT series of machines is a modular system. You can actually use this. This is a 6x79 belt grinder. It can be used as a standalone belt grinder. Very powerful machine on its own for that. But then we have these modules that go on the front of it. Um, in this case, we're going to be talking about the centerless grinding module. There's also a tube notching module, so you can get a lot of use out of the base of this machine by just attaching the different attachments onto it. So, centerless grinding has become more and more popular recently. Uh, basically what centerless grinding is, it's sort of a tube polishing procedure. Um, it's a way to polish either the mill scale off of a tube and give it a nice bright finish. Or you can take like a stainless handrail or a piece of aluminum railing and give it a nice fine finish and give it a, a real even look. Um, so it's used for all different types of things. It can be used for boat railings, for handrail, for uh, the, our race car customers are using it to polish the mill scale off the tube so they can weld easier and they don't have to um, just do little spots. They just do the whole tube before they start their bending and notching procedures. So a lot of different reasons to do centerless grinding. This machine has a capacity from 3 eighths of an inch up to 5 and an eighth inch. So you got a wide range. You can see that this is a two speed machine. For centerless grinding purposes, we're going to be using just the low speed for that. But for the high speed notching and grinding, there's the option for that as well. This machine, you've got a kind of an optional top grinding platen. So gives you some extra versatility there to either deburr a part or clean something up or straighten an edge. Up top here, of course, you can normally grind on your front contact wheel when the attachment is not on it. But today we're here to talk about the centerless grinding. So you can see here, we've got our, uh, our bronze tube guide in here for our steel material that we're going to be centerless grinding today. One of the things we get some questions on when it comes to the centerless grinder is how hard is it to set up and what are the adjustments? So we're gonna step through that today and I'm gonna show you a few different ways to sort of simplify that process. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is look at this centerless grinding attachment and all the different adjustments and levers to make sure we know how to adjust it, how to set up before we initially fire it up. So this rubber wheel here on the centerless attachment is a motorized wheel, it's called the brake wheel. And this wheel is actually rotating backwards or up as far as the tube is concerned. It's actually going to create um, kind of the counteraction to this grinding wheel which is trying to push down on it. So in the end the tube will be spinning along this guide and it's the adjustment of all these components that keeps it riding on this uh, guide rail there. So the first thing we have is this stop. Uh, this is basically um, allowing the brake wheel to get closer to the grinding wheel. So the brake wheel needs to obviously be touching the material that you're working on, but not bumping up against the grinding wheel. So you need to set this so that it's allowing the brake wheel to touch the tubing, but not get too close. So you can choose the preferred distance there. This is spring-loaded, so it's applying pressure onto the tube as it's being ground, and that spring pressure is adjusted by this crank knob here. So you can increase spring pressure or decrease spring pressure, and this is just sort of something that you have to go by feel. There's not really a set way to be able to know. Obviously, the more pressure that you put against the tube and the brake wheel, the harder it's going to press into the grinding wheel. If you don't put enough pressure on it, the tube's not going to sit in there firmly like it needs to. So this is something you just have to get a little bit of a feel for. The angle of the brake wheel to the contact wheel and the pitch are both adjustable on this side over here. So with this adjustment, you're actually setting to make the brake wheel parallel to the contact wheel. 
So as I loosen this knob here, we can change this, and you basically just want to make sure that it is parallel so that it's contacting the tube all the way. And we can put a piece of tube in there to show that. You can see that it's touching. So we tighten that knob down. Now, this other adjustment is to change the pitch. Now, the pitch of this brake wheel determines the speed at which the tube travels through the grinding wheels. If you look from the back side here, you can see that there's a slight incline and it's maybe only five or 10 degrees. So that is going to set how fast my tube travels. Now, if I loosen that, I can change this pitch, lock it down. This would make the tube travel very quickly, probably too quickly. I wanna just start maybe with a very gentle angle, um, lower on the left, higher on the right, and then the tube is going to move from the right side across to the left side. One of the most critical um, adjustments on the centerless grinder is to get this guide rail position set. That can be a little bit confusing at times. Um, I'm going to do my best to simplify it here for you and give you an easy way to calculate that. So the reason that we need this set properly is because we need the tube to sit just below the center line of these axles. And if we do that, the pressure from the grinding action will push the tube down onto the guide rail so it won't try to fly up out of there. And this brake wheel will be continuously spinning the tube while this is pushing it down on the guide rail. That's the end result. So the easiest way that I can tell you to place this is step one will be to set the distance from the front of this guide rail to the front of the belt. We would do that by using a fourth of the diameter of the tube that we're using. In this case, we're using an inch and a half tube, so a fourth of that would be three eighths of an inch. This guide rail is a quarter of an inch thick, so we just need basically an eighth of an inch gap between the front of the belt and this. So we have just a small eighth of an inch gap here, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact, but a fourth of the tube diameter from the front of this rail to the front of the belt. So we've got that set, and that's adjusted by using these two bolts right here. These slotted holes allow you to move this in and out. 13 millimeter wrench will, will loosen that for you. The next adjustment is a little bit trickier, and that is we want the center line of this tube to be slightly below the center line of these two axles. So again, we're going to use a fourth as our rule of thumb, and the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to just use a little bit of masking tape to help get a visual on that. Take this tape from the center line of this axle to the center line of our contact wheel axle. Now, you can see this top edge should be the center line of those two axles. And what I'm shooting for is to be about a fourth of the diameter of the tube down. So our halfway mark of this tube is about in the center of the tape. And the top edge of the tape is going to be roughly in that 25% uh, of the tube diameter down from the top. So hopefully that makes sense. But what we're looking to do is be be about a fourth of the tube OD below this center line. So this is the best way. You can use a straight edge. Um, maybe there's a better way you can find to measure it, but I find that this just creates a pretty simple visual. So if that is not where you want it, there's two different ways you can adjust this. You can loosen these two 13 millimeter bolts, and that will raise and lower this entire carriage up and down. Or you can just change the guide itself with these jacking bolts here, loosening these small bolts and then just turning the guide up and down that way. Okay, a couple notes about initially firing up the machine. Uh, this machine is very powerful, the belt spins very fast, so hitting that start button can be a little bit daunting sometimes when you're not quite sure how the belt's tracking, that type of thing. So just a couple notes before you hit the go button. Um, one thing that I have noticed with this machine is we're running a Scotch-Brite belt here. You will want to adjust this stop guide to make sure you have clearance so that this is not rubbing on your 
um, scotch Brite belt. If you're using a thinner belt, it's probably not a problem, but this guide here, this grinding guide, can be raised with these two bolts to make clearance there. Also, underneath this belt, there is a graphite pad on this platen. Over on this side of the machine, there's an adjustment for the height of that platen. You'll want to make sure that these two acorn nuts are at the bottom of their slot and that that graphite pad and platen are as low as possible so that the scotch Brite doesn't knock the graphite off of your pad prematurely. That's there just to help a, a standard belt with a normal paper backing to slide across it. You can raise that up if you're using the platen a lot, but lower that and and we'll secure this. Everything's spinning freely. You can kind of spin the belt a little bit by hand with the cover off to make sure it's not tracking hard one way or the other, but your tracking lever is actually this knob underneath the power switch. If this knob gets turned in, it's gonna move the belt more that direction, so it's easy to remember, turn the knob out and the belt will come over on the contact wheel. So we're just going to do a real quick fire up. And it looks like our belt is tracking, tracking well. So we should be ready to go. You'll see when I turn the machine on, the action of the brake wheel here, countering the action of the contact wheel. Everything's ready to go. I believe we're ready to grind our first tube. So to begin a grind, I'm going to take my tube from the right side. I think you could actually do it from the right or the left, depending on if you're right or left handed. You would just have to change the angle of your brake wheel. But I'm right handed. I'm going in from the right side. I'm pulling back on this brake wheel with this upper handle. And I'm going to place the tube on the guide rail about a third of the way into the contact wheel. Now, as I lower the brake wheel in to touch the tube. I have to kind of do this rather swiftly. Both contact wheels should grab a hold of the tube and it will start spinning in your hand. Now as the tube goes across the contact wheel, you can see the finish being put on it, the speed being controlled by the angle of our brake wheel. As the end of the tube is about two thirds of the way across the contact wheel, you'll want to grab the brake handle, pull back on that to release the tube and grab your tube out of there. For shorter pieces, you're just gonna be using your hands to feed the tube in and out. For longer pieces, you're gonna to wanna to use some type of a material rest or stand to help you support the weight of the tube. So you can see we've got a nice finish on this tube. Um, a lot of people ask us about whether they can change the outside diameter of a tube with a centerless grinder. That's not really the intention of a centerless grinder. It's really just putting a finish on the tube. You won't see a lot of change in outside diameter at all, even when measured with a micrometer. This particular finish we achieved using the coarse surface conditioning belt, but there are a ton of different abrasive options out there. Some people use finer grit standard abrasive belts. Uh, the surface conditioning belts work really nicely to give you a nice satin finish. So depending on your needs, um, there's lots of options. So we've, uh, we've kind of gone through the setup, the demonstration. We've got some work to do on this machine, so we're going to do some bigger parts on it. We'll show you some of that in the video. And if you have any questions at all, be sure to call our sales team or check out our website, tricktools.com. Thanks for watching.